Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I'm back, you know, I, I'm going to do my best to try and show up here a little bit more often as I uh, told you in my last video. I'm going to try to keep the videos about at the 45 minute length or so, um, but try to uh, show up here a little bit more often now that I'm feeling a little bit more in my energy again. So tonight I want to uh, share with you some things that I've been, uh, that Spirit's been showing me, my guides have been speaking to me about, and then we might pull some cards and get into um, any other messages that want to come forth. I have been playing around on my Substack on the Word for Your Day, the, pa the last two messages I've done, I've been using the um, Star Codes Astro Oracle, which was a gift from one of you guys, and I think I want to get into that tonight and see how the planets um, are speaking to us. So I think I will do that. Um, but before I get into anything, I want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Um, welcome if you're visiting for the very first time. I invite you to hang out and see if you vibe with my energy and the messages um, and teachings that I have to deliver. Um, and you know, if you are vibing with me, I, I then invite you to do the YouTube thing if you feel like it to like, to share, to comment, to subscribe, um, hit that notification bell if you want to know when I'm going to be posting, and all that other jazz. Welcome to all of my beautiful returning viewers. Welcome if you're a subscriber. Welcome if you're not. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, let's get into what it was I wanted to speak about tonight. So as I record this, it is Saturday, December, Saturday, December, Saturday, January the 6th. I keep doing that this week. It's January, y'all, not December, January. We're, we are officially in 2024, six days in, right? So it is uh, January the 6th as I record this. We are five days out of the new moon in Capricorn. And um, I was taking a look when I was doing... I've been um, releasing on my Substack um, like pieces of the full Tower Astrology report for 2024. It's about it's a little over 20 pages in length, and so I've been um, publishing it in sections. And I will be uh, releasing the entirety of the report sometime next week. Um, on my Ko-Fi shop for those of you who are interested and are not Substack members if you want the full um, Tower Astrology Ascension report for 2024 I will be doing it that way. There are a few um, articles on Substack if you check out my Substack that are still open you have access to that are excerpts from there if you want to check it out. But um, when I was getting ready to write um, this report you know, a few days ago, 10 days ago, whenever I began. I looked into the astrology for the year ahead, but I looked specifically at what was happening with the moons. And I don't know what led me to do this, but I then opened up the, the list of the moons from 2022. And I noticed something very interesting. So bear with me a second, because I'm going to try to articulate this in a way that makes sense. Um, I have both of the, the, the moons for 2024 and 2022 here. So this coming new moon in Capricorn is occurring at 20 degrees, right? And then on January the 25th, we have the full moon in Leo occurring at 5 degrees. Then coming up on February the 9th, we have the new moon in Aquarius that is again happening at 20 degrees. And this 20 degree energy is kind of important um, because it's very much, it's a Scorpio degree and it's also connected to Plutonian energy, the judgment card, very specifically. So we have two new moons happening at tarot energies that have to do with judgment. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing the tarot astrology on Solara Rises for these new moons. And also when the new moon happens in Capricorn this coming week, it will also be, um, the North Node will be at, in Aries at 20 degrees also. So that's another interesting thing to think about. Now, the, f the full moon in Virgo that's happening on February the 24th is at five degrees also. So we got 25, five, which is interesting in and of itself. We've got repeating numbers and then the new moon in Pisces will be at 20 degrees 
then we'll have our first lunar eclipse in Libra, and it will be at five degrees, and then the numbers begin to shift. But what was interesting about this is that my guides took me to the moons that occurred both in 2022 and 2023 to see if this was just, uh, you know, like, um, if there was, if there were any similarities with the 2023 moons that were coming up, because I noticed something very interesting that was occurring in 2022. And that is that the full moon in Capricorn that occurred on Wednesday, July the 13th in 2022 occurred at 21 degrees, which is just one degree out from where the new moon is going to be in a couple of days. Then the, uh, a couple of weeks later, we had the new moon in Leo on July 28th in 2022, occurring at five degrees. We have the, the full moon in Leo happening in a couple of weeks, also at five degrees. Then we had the full moon in Aquarius that occurred on August the 12th at 19 degrees. We've got the new moon in Aquarius happening at 20 degrees. Then we have, um, we had the new moon in Virgo in 2022 happening at four degrees. And this year we have the full moon in Virgo happening at five degrees. So it's about one degree out for each that I've listed, the, the new moon in Capricorn, full moon in Leo, new moon in Aquarius and full moon in Virgo, except for the Leo energy, which is the new moon um, in Leo in 2022 was at five degrees, the full moon in Leo coming up will be at five degrees also. Why is this important? There's just a one de degree discrepancy in the rest of them. Why is this important? Well, because the full moon in Capricorn in 2022 was when I was shown that our contracts, our karmic contracts with families and um, those pesky karmic cycles that we've been involved in lifetime after lifetime that we can't seem to escape um, different beings, uh, different skin suits, same being, um, those contracts came to a close at, um, in 2022 uh, around the full moon in Capricorn, okay? And so now we have a year and a half later, the new moon in Capricorn occurring. So the full moon in Capricorn was happening then at 21 degrees, which is a degree of the world, right? The new moon in Capricorn is happening now at 20 degrees, which is a judge, the judgment card, okay? Um, in that time since the full moon in Capricorn has been when a lot of you, a lot of us have been um, receiving a lot of the um, disclosure around the, the narratives, the plots, the schemes, all of these energies that we've been a part of because of these karmic cycles, especially when it comes to um, these karmic family contracts, right? So the contracts closed out in July of 2022, meaning that um, when a contract closes, what has to happen next is uh, the things that have kept the contract together begin to be shown to us in order that we can clear those energies and not only uh, walk away from the contract, but also purge ourselves of the energies that kept on calling us back into um, those agreements, right? So this is what we've been going through for the past like a year and a half is um, the exposure of these energies, the ownership of our, our part in the exchanges and the purging of our fields of them, especially as they try to still continue to cling on. Now, Capricorn energy is all about material contracts and not just material contracts um, as we think about them in, uh, you know, matrix speak, but on a divine level, the energy of Capricorn is all about the contracts we, the agreements, we, I, sh I should say, I prefer the word agreements when we're talking about it on a divine level, but the agreements we have with the earth. In other words, um, in our divine nature, we are supposed to be guardians and protectors of the earth. We come and we bring our own value that is endowed to us by the Divine Mother through our Taurus energy. And it is through Capricorn that we begin to implement it on the earth planes in a way where when we leave the earth, we leave her in a better state than we arrived. Um, 
And that's because we take the value that we've been endowed with through Taurus and we learn how to grow it through Scorpio with one another in order to nourish and bring increase onto the earth planes, which is also expressed through Capricorn. So Capricorn is also over agreements in general. Okay, so I say all of this because we are entering into a new life cycle. I spoke about this uh, in the, the last um, video I did. We're entering into a new life cycle. 2024 is a new life cycle of, of, on the earth, okay? And as such, we are given the opportunities, all free will, all the time, to enter into new material agreements, new um, relationships, new anything that has to do with um, how we express ourselves physically on the earth planes in terms of how we relate to one another and how we bring increase to the earth is kind of um, is kind of exemplified through this Capricorn energy. So with this new moon in Capricorn, um, there is a, a, you know, through the judgment card, there is a rebirth that's occurring for one thing. And there are endings that are happening, and of course there are there are judgments that are are being made, and the judgments are really the most important judgment we can make is for self. It's time for us to begin to choose um, energies that are in alignment now with our divine truth. In other words, we have spent a lot of the past year and a half um, dealing with these energies that didn't want to let us go. And we've been dealing with seeing the stories, seeing the betrayal, seeing the betrayal cycle, seeing how it all connected, um, seeing um, the, the matrix indoctrination of it all, um, seeing how, um, you know, really the, at the helm of this all has been, uh, you know, the corporations, the factions, the orders, the societies that have all, um, you know, gotten us all in, in, involved in their, uh, their craziness one way or another especially by way of our, you know, family members and other beings who chose matrix trinkets over being humane, you know. Um, and those stories are now coming to a close. And that doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything ends. That's not the point. The point is now that we had a time where those energies had to be exposed. We had to... Um, engage and entertain what was going on in order to help us to see the cycles in order to purge in order also to um, acknowledge our own victimization because um, you know when you have been victimized and you haven't had the opportunity to express that and to um, be validated in that it does something and so the past year and a half was about us validating ourselves and even in forums like this uh, validating one another in um, the ex in these exposures and now as we move up to the new moon in Capricorn there's a new story that's opening up and even in the way we're being called to deal with ourselves now, you can see that this is happening also because my guides began to show me, they said to me, you know, like the way energy works is there's a, uh, a larger energy or you could call it macrocosmic energy and then within that there's a smaller energy which would be a microcosm and then within that there's another microcosm and another one and another one until you get down to like the smallest unit of energy and that's how it works and the smallest unit of energy affects the largest macrocosm and the largest macrocosm affects the smallest unit. Um, now what we've been doing is uh, this whole ascension we have been clearing out macrocosmic layers of energy and then we got closer and closer and closer to the energies that were really hitting home you could say and we've been really dealing with um, the alchemizing of that over the past year and a half or so, and some for some of you longer than that. Um, but the, the intensity of it, I would say, for all of us has been like the last year and a half. And now, um, what my guides are showing me is now it's time, it's one-to-one, -one. it's one-on-one. -on -one. And in all frankness, it always is. It's always us against self. But now it's like... Um, 
we've dealt with the external energies that have tried to um, prevent us from moving in the fullness of our godhood. And now it's time for us to really deal solely with the internal energies because once we do that work and we focus solely now on the internal blocks, anything that's still lingering and trying to cling by default is going to, to fall. Now, remember I said yesterday, um, it's really important this year to focus on what you are streaming your consciousness towards. What are you paying attention to? There was a time to pay attention to what certain beings were doing because you didn't know, because I didn't know we needed to awaken to these schemes. But that time to, to focus on that is over. And now it's time the next stage of ascension for many of you, especially if you're rolling with me and you're part of this collective. Um, the next phase now is really doing the nitty gritty just one to one with self, it, regardless as to how other beings would try to, to get, um, try to break you up with you. That's really what it is, you know? And um, it's to the point where when these narratives want to come back into your reality now, where um, these old stories want to rear their ugly heads and even the energies want to enter into your fields and you see them playing out, that actually at this point is no longer information for you because you already know about the energy. You're just seeing it play out the way it normally does. And what it's, what it's doing at this point is no longer giving us information. Now it's trying to distract us from doing um, this more important work. So just be aware of that. There's a shift in how we need to deal now with all of these old karmic stories because they're over. And this new moon in Capricorn and new moon in Aquarius is really bringing forth judgment energies for all of us. And judgment isn't a bad thing, right? Judgment is what helps to liberate us into the next cycle. So in other words, we get to decide, we get to put the gavel down and say, enough is enough. I don't care how many times you continue to try to get my attention now with your antics. I'm choosing to uh, take my attention, which is my life force and my energy away from you. I will starve you of my attention. And in doing so, um, I will also uh, put an end to this karmic story. Okay, so that's the main message that was coming through. So I'm going to do a four card spread. I'm fanning the cards out face down in front of me and I'm going to pull the cards I'm being drawn to, keeping them face down until I turn them around for you to see. Three, four. Okay. okay, at the bottom of the deck we do have third house communication. Um, this is the house that is ruled by Gemini. For me, when I do uh, personal tarot astrology, the third house is the house where our value begins to be reflected back to us. So the first house is your divine or your I am truth. It's the, the energy that crowns you this lifetime, your ascendant, your Aries energy. It's also um, like the gifts of the divine father come through the first house. And then your second house is your Taurus energy, it's your resources, it's the gifts of the Divine Mother, all she gives and all she endows you with in order for you to thrive. Um, and these are your resources in terms of what is in your own bio field, your own energy field. Um, all the things you've been given, the tools you've been given, the abilities, the gifts, um, 
the divine wealth you carry that you bring forth in order to materialize comes through the second house of Taurus, right? So this includes your talents and everything, okay? Now the third house of Gemini, the way I see it is, uh, which is ruled by Gemini rather, how I see the third house is how that value that you've been given um, and the, that divine power you've been endowed with by the divine father and the divine mother is either reflected back to you through uh, the exchanges you have with your peers and those that you are constantly spending your days with, you know, community, neighbors, peers, um, siblings, um, how that is either reflected back to you or how that begins to be dim diminished because of other beings insecurity and the matrix shenanigans so we've got the third house coming out at the bottom of the deck in the overarching theme we do have palace athena i don't know much about palace athena to be completely frank i know about athena as a as a goddess you know she's like a um, a warring goddess, but I don't know much about Pallas Athena. In the challenge position, we do have the 11th house of community, which is also to do with, um, that's the Aquarian energy, that's the, that the um, energy of this age, right? The humanitarian energy, the service energy. <laughs> In what you're not seeing, we have solar flares activate, okay? And then, in the guidance position, oh, in the guidance position, we have Virgo digest. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so one second because I left the I left the booklet for this on my bed. Let's see what I pull from the Palace Athena. Energy, let's see. I don't know much about asteroids, to be completely frank, except for, of course, Chiron. Ooh, Pallas Athena speaks of a sharp and guarded intellect. Myth mythological Athena is a goddess of wisdom, intellect, skill, strategy, and defense. Yeah, she's a warring goddess. Her father, Zeus, swallowed her mother, Metis, goddess of wise counsel and planning, possibly to hide her from his spouse, Hera. Athena gave her father a pounding headache and leapt fully grown and completely armored from her father's forehead, from his third eye. <laughs> this powerful goddess could beat the males at their own game and challenge the world to never underestimate feminine strength and wisdom. Mm action, Pallas Athena loans you the ability to walk into a boardroom or other professional situation and be ready to take on any challenge completely in your power with just the right words at hand. Just ask her. Pallas Athena is within you. Speak to her. She can help you navigate the echelons of power. Develop real skills, craft, articulation, and tech genius with her support and your concentration. Connect your trained knowledge, natural abilities, and that spark of divine fire. Just don't overdo the intellectual defenses. Make sure your intelligence and ability to rationalize don't cause more problems than they solve. Take off your helmet in the bedroom. <laughs> Inventory yourself and see if you like Athena, underestimate the power of the feminine heart or emotional intelligence. Keep that mind connected to your heart. Challenge. Wherever you are on the gender spectrum, do not think you need to deny or disrespect the feminine, the anima, and the heart in yourself and others in order to access brilliant intelligence and competence. Wow. Intellect and wisdom, huh? Well, one of the downfalls of the Matrix was it taught us, well, one of the many downfalls of the Matrix was it taught us how to, um, it taught us how to pursue intellect at the cost of, uh, at the cost of, of, of following our own hearts, right? And so as this new earth is being birthed through us, um, there are certain things that are being 
brought back on board and the way we intellectualize, the way we use our minds is kind of getting a do-over because we've become so used to, um, we became so used to using our own minds to program ourselves against our hearts. And we became so used to hearing things, especially for those of you who are, you know, highly sensitive beings, which probably is all of you. We became so used to downplaying that and having to, um, you know, learn how to survive, <laughs> how to survive, um, which oftentimes means having to wear or meant having to wear armor that guarded our ability to fully be who we are and to emotionally express the fullness of who we are. And um, for a lot of us, when we did express the, you know, the depths of our emotion, there was a penalty, right? So this feels here. And even with this third house of communication, this is something that so many of us learned from a very early age. We learned how to um, not only dim our lights, it's dim our own light, it's, it's a little bit worse than that. We learned how to shut off our own hearts. We learned how to close off our hearts because um, for many of us in the exchanges we had with peers, in the exchanges we had with siblings, community, neighborhood, school, all of those uh, things that we, you know, partook in on a daily basis, clubs, club activities, um, we had experiences where we learned at a, an early age not to show the world our sensitivity, not to, we learned that emotional intelligence um, didn't get you anything in the world. Um, and for some of us, it's not even that we wanted anything in the world, but we also didn't want to be bullied, <laughs> you know? So it feels like, um, it feels like there is a, a new intelligence that's being born, a new, a new caliber of intelligence that's being born onto the earth planes. Um, and it's coming through because of, because of, uh, probably the solar flare energy um, and this new level of intelligence is what is uh, this new level of intelligence is uh, it's like restoring the divine feminine wisdom that has been lost and shunned and um, lost and shunned and and rejected and and ridiculed in all of us to different levels um, it's returning, it's returning to the earth, it's returning through us. But it really does feel like there's this new level of intellect that the, that this age of Aquarius is birthing. And this Virgo energy is, um, I'm getting a few messages from this. For one thing, the Virgo energy is here to bring it into harvest. I'm very drawn to her holding these uh, sheets of corn, right? But more than that, the Virgo energy is helping us to be able to assimilate and integrate it into our being on both individual and collective levels. Um, this Virgo energy is also indicating that um, this is occurring as we do this in self also. Virgo is a uh, connect is very much about how we um, how we liberate self, how we perfect our soul, or rather, um, the use of our light. So we recover the light of our solar plexus through Leo. Um, and then Virgo helps us to learn how to wield it powerfully um, for our own personal uprising um, and in order to protect ourselves before we go out into the world through the seventh house or, the, or through Libra energy and begin to share it. So a lot of hands I'm seeing here.
This is also to do with the birthing of certain technologies that are happening right now too. And um, we're never to be afraid of technology. We're not to be afraid of AI or any of these things because the truth of the matter is that all these technologies are made through us. These are things that we do. Um, these are things that we do naturally that they have to make machines to emulate. And maybe there's something there coming through with this also. You know, um, it's almost like there's a new caliber of intellect that's being reborn through the integration of, you know, divine feminine wisdom that's been lost that's also reactivating us in this ability to um, turn on the technologies that flow through us um, in ways that we couldn't before. So 2023 has been all about the, the reclaiming of the light body, right? That was the chariot and, and the tower energies of 2023 were about tearing down the blocks to us reclaiming um, our, you know, our own light bodies. And 2024 is where we learn how to ride. Mm -hmm. It's where we learn how to, to, to drive. It's where we learn how to get back into the driver's seat and, and maneuver our consciousness in favor of learning how to utilize our light bodies to do what it is that we, we want to do as conscious creators. It's where we learn how to plug ourselves back in. It's where our gateway systems begin to realign with the gates that they're supposed to be aligned with in order that we can stream by way of our own consciousness back onto the earth planes. Um, these technol these quote unquote technologies that have ultimately been stolen from us. and. Um, the thing about AI is that AI is created off of our intelligence. It might be artificial, you know, in the sense that it's, it's operated through non-sentient energies and, and, and uh, hardwares, etc. But it's still, it's still created, it's still made possible by us, right? But the thing that AI lacks is it lacks emotion. It lacks heart, it has mind, it has intellect, but it lacks the heart that makes it um, able to connect with source. Heartless beings cannot, don't have a soul and they therefore cannot connect with source energy. And um, I spoke about the two worlds that are forming yesterday and the Matrix 2.0 is a world where, um, from what I've seen, when my guides have shown me, it's a world where 2344 in my clock is a world where there will be no more connection to source and AI will, will be the God, will be their external God. And, and because it's not a real God, um, much like the original Matrix, it will be energy harvesting its um, subjects in order to, to keep its own agenda alive. And um, when my guides started to speak to me about that, um, they showed me a world without creativity, a world without art, a world without real originality. All of it will be gone. And I don't know why I'm sharing that right now other than um, something is, um, this is to do, this is to do with, um, This is to do with, with what's happening with the schism. On the one hand, there's this, uh, we're living in a world where the polarities, like I said yesterday, are being magnified on either end. So on the one hand, you have us connecting higher through this palace Athena energy with um, our divine sensibilities are coming back our divine sensibilities that allow us to, to stream our consciousness and to utilize the power of our light bodies to do these things technologically that, um, you know, we've been sold in devices. Um, these devices have all been made by hacking into our God abilities and replicating them. And the reason why they seem so intuitive to us and um, natural in the way that we're able to interact with a lot of these things is because they're based off of our energy. Um, they're based off of how we function when we are in our multi-dimensional truth. And 
they're based off of like how we are built as electromagnetic systems. In other words, your heart puts out the frequency that is like an algorithm that calls things in that match it. All of this was taken from us. All of this was built through us. And it feels like there is some kind of energy that is helping us right now. The, flare, the solar flares specifically are helping to reintroduce us to our technology and our ability to do what we would classify as the impossible, right? So um, as <laughs> this is again where the polar we're going to see the polarities in action as AI continues to rise in its popularity, in its quote unquote abilities, um, the same thing is happening for us, but in a different way, because remember, we are creating, we are living in two different polarities. It's the same energy, but different representations. One is us utilizing the power of our God power and our Godhood to bring back our, go ahead. Sorry, to bring back our own ability to connect with these technologies and stream them in organic ways because it's just us, right? But then on the other hand, you have a world that's being manifested where these energies are being exploited for the purpose of keeping certain beings locked down. Um, and it feels like um, the solar flare weather and energy of 2024, this is what it's kind of, accomplishing. Oh, that's too many, it's too many, it's too many, it's too many. Let's see these two that came out. The Seven of Cups and the Five of Swords. So that's Aquarius and Scorpio energy. Third Deacon of Scorpio, 20 to, 30, uh, 20 to 29 degrees. And this is the first Deacon of Aquarius, 0 to 10. And at the bottom we have four of wands, which is a third deacon of Aries, 20 to 29 degrees Aries. So the four of wands is speaking about something being stabilized um, in terms of light activations. That's how I'm seeing that right now. Um, I'm seeing more and more that the fire energies of the zodiac are less to do with fire as an element and more to do with light activations and light codes. Um, Seven of Cups has come out. Now, the Seven of Cups for me is the energy that opens up roads. Um, it's Scorpio energy. So for me, it's a, it's a third deacon of Scorpio. It's like the, the Phoenix rising energy of, of Scorpio. So Scorpio energy has, um, it has three different uh three different uh, symbols that represent it, right? So it has the scorpion, which is, uh, it represents our lower nature, right? And then it has the eagle, which represents our, our higher nature. And then it has the phoenix, which is what happens when we are able to reconcile the two and be be in our wholeness and, and kind of return to, to Godhood. Scorpio is what opens the door for us to actually return into our God power and um, 
by way of integrating the fullness of who we are, our lower and our higher selves, and then Sagittarius begins to help us bring that onto the earth planes and take it out into the world. So with this Seven of Cups energy, with the third deacon, this is like the Phoenix rising energy. And this is, this is the Seven of Cups opens doors by bringing forth um, many options. And so in that, it can be confusing and cloudy um, because uh, the more options you have, the more you're brought into a place of having to choose, right? So it can be confusing, but it also is an energy that opens doors, opens doors that we never thought were possible. It's also, I'm seeing it more and more as um, the energy that because we've risen into Phoenix energy, we're able to we're able to connect with our true gateway system, which is then perfected through the, the Sagittarian energy. Scorpio and Sagittarius are really about receiving the, the angelic or the galactic activations that help us to bring our gateway system back online. And I've spoken about, I spoke about that during Scorpio and Sagittarius season, how we are um, energetically speaking, we're full of gates. Right. And even that energy that I kept picking up on in Scorpio season of those angels, that I think they're called the orphan with many eyes, was speaking to me of that, too. How many of us have many, many gates that align us cosmically with other gates and ports and portals that allow for us to do certain things in accordance with what is in our energy fields, in accordance with who we are. And so it feels like um, for some of you, for some of us, this is definitely going to be coming back online. Okay. Um, now the Five of Swords. <laughs> the Five of Swords is Aquarian energy and it is, it's nasty Aquarian <laughs> energy. It is um, all the fives are connected to not so nice aspects of the fixed signs. So, you know, we've got the five of, of wands is Leo and it's fighting energy. Five of cups is Scorpio and it's like depressing energy. <laughs> then we got the five of swords. It's like, I'm a, I'm a cut a bitch kind of energy. And, um, but what I'm, I find very interesting about this is that she's holding the sword in victory. There's no one else in this particular depiction. Normally in the Five of Swords, you have a person standing there and they've clearly been in the battle and they've got the swords and you see other people retreating because they have uh, won the sword by, um, you know, um, by using methods like belittling and gossip, slander, violence, all manner of things that, you know, you don't do in order to win a fight fairly. That's the energy. But here she's holding a sword and there's nothing and nobody else in the background. It feels like a personal victory. And in the um, video I did, the last video I did, I spoke a lot about the wounded energies of Leo because that's what has really been coming through for me this year in terms of what it is that we have to deal with on an individual and a collective level, um, especially because of that sorry, especially because of that inception point uh, where it feels like we are back at the inception point of the energies that started the matrix through um, the Atlantean timelines. And as such, those energies are going to um, play themselves out again to see whether we're going to choose to say goodbye to those timelines for good, right? So, um, and because you know, the, the energy of this year in Leo is a strength card and not the sun, which speaks more of the challenges that we have to face um, when it comes to the energy of that sign. The medicine that Leo has to give us this year is more about the challenging aspects of its energy, right? But that's not to say that this year, because the other energy that is uh, at play is the number 17 card, which is the star, which is Aquarian energy, which speaks of divine alignment, right? It's the divine alignment that precedes the sun, okay? So there are wounded energies of the Aquarian nature that we have to be aware of also as we begin to undertake this journey into learning how to utilize the fullness of our consciousnesses to take us where it is we want to go as opposed to 
you know, unconsciously creating our reality. So it's interesting that in the challenge position, we do have the 11th house as well as the five of swords. And the message that's coming through right now is remember I said at the beginning, and then I'm going to wrap this up because I'm trying to keep these messages brief right now. Remember I said at the beginning how there's been this shift in no longer paying attention to these energies that externally want to bother us and to really turn um, within now and deal with the internal, the nitty gritty internal stuff that wants to make itself known to us in order that we can, well, with the Virgo energy, perfect our souls, perfect our solar energy, perfect our ability to drive our, our own consciousness. Um, and that has to happen by us focusing on our consciousness and not the distractions outside of us, right? Um, this feels like it's, it's, uh, it's speaking that message again. We as beings have been taught how to always measure ourselves against what, some, what something else that's going on outside of us. That was a matrix trick, right? And many of us have gotten, you know, so much better at, at not doing that, right? No longer comparing ourselves to people. And some of us never did. It doesn't matter. There was still, um, there was still this, this thing where our barometer for success was always based upon what someone else was doing. You know, whether we were doing it consciously or not, it doesn't matter. And even in how we engage in social media and all these other things, it's all geared towards pushing that agenda of getting us to compare. Um, getting us not only to compare, but also to compare in order to create uh, narratives that produce envy and narratives that produce feeling less than. It's, it's all about creating lack by having us look at what someone else is doing and feeling like we're not doing enough or we're not enough and, and, and all this other stuff. And um, there's a real call here to be very, very aware of the energies that we are looking at um, or that we're allowing into our internal reality um, right now that there, there will be and I sp I've spoken about this I've written about it rather in the um, tar astrology report this year everything right now will be fighting for your consciousness everything will be fighting for your attention in the most subtle of ways um, this is really, this has always been a battle for your consciousness, but this year it takes another level because we are in this grand creation portal where these energies, um, these nefarious energies want to be able to stream as much attention towards what it is that they're building in subtle ways and, than they've ever wanted to before. You know, and um, I got into this in one of the reports again, the Tower Astrology reports for this year about how um, even the energy of ascension they want to utilize because they don't want people going past a certain point, but they'll let them get but so far in order to in order to take that energy and not even ascension, but let's think about something like, um, you know, uh, the changes that are occurring within systems and institutions and people waking up and seeing what some of these things are about, that in and of itself is a strategy for energy harvesting, meaning that if they can get people upset about the things that have happened and protesting um, against these systems that actually don't really exist in all frankness, they only resist in name and in front in order to get us to pay attention to them. That is a way to draw people's energy. And people think that because they're awake and they're aware now of what's going on, that that is them becoming liberated. But the liberation doesn't come. The exposure is, is just the first step to liberation, the exposure of an energy. And then we must do the work internally to dismantle certain things that have allowed 
that to be possible to begin with, if that makes sense. And I say that because they want to utilize the power of exposure, the exposure of energies, the exposure of what's been happening to incite emotions in people that get them to feel like because they know this information that's what is the liberation but the liberation is not just the 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 getting the the getting upset about the exposure the liberation is then taking your power back from all of these things and so they will allow these levels of exposure because they know most people will only get to that place of getting upset and believing that's part of the liberation when th that's just the first step. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is like, um, be very aware of all of these emotional tactics that are about to be unleashed in order to distract us and get us looking at things outside and, and, and still thinking that, um, that seeing certain things shift outside is indicative of, of higher liberation. The true liberation is only going to come from within. I hope this, I hope I'm, I'm articulating this um, in a way that makes sense. Um, and be very, very careful of, of how you begin, how we begin to connect with energies that we we feel that we want to help them rise into um, the next level. There's nothing wrong with that. We're here to do that, but we're not here to do that at the cost of our own ability to rise. We're not, because every, the whole point of ascension is that every being comes back into their own godhood, okay? Their own ability to be in the driver's seat. It's a personal choice at every turn to choose self, to choose to return to the expression of Godhood. We're not here to um, to pull people forward, if that makes sense, especially people who don't want to come or aren't ready to go, so um, aren't ready to come forward. So be careful because the energies are shifting now. Um, there was a time to make people aware. Um, and that time for the most part is, is, is done. If people have not woken up at this point, they probably will not. And I'm not one who will ever say anything is impossible, nothing's impossible. I do believe we will have more people who are waking up to higher levels, but they're already somewhat awake. Um, what I don't believe is that we're all of a sudden going to have people who have chosen to, you know, I don't think we're having another um, grand wave of awakening. I could be wrong, you know, um, I hope I am, but that's not what I'm seeing here. Okay, so as such, you know, the way that we operate in terms of how we are moving in this next phase has to be different than before. It has to be very focused on undoing those um, those energies within self now. Um, that's what it really comes down to. There has to be a lot of self-focus in healthy ways this year, right? In healthy ways. Um, in order to fully liberate our fields from repeating what it is that we don't want to repeat because we're free. We are free. The cycles are broken. The contracts close out. Um, the, um, the playing out of certain things that needed to play out for the most part are done. They're coming to a close. And now we're at this juncture where we have to choose if we're going to do what it takes within to now close up shop and close up the stories for good, if that makes sense. So um, be very aware of that Aquarian wounded energy that wants to always put the group first or, um, you know, um, th that Aquarian energy in its woundedness can get lost in the group narrative. Um, even in Ascension, lost in the group narrative, and this is not a time to get lost in any group narratives. And that's not to say we can't work together in groups. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's not a time. Um, it's a time to, when you are in a group, to be so aware of who you are and your place 
in that position. And even then, for me, I don't believe in, in, in group work right now on a personal level. That's me. I was shown through the 8-8 portal that it was time to really um, begin to, to get alone, you know. But that's me. That's my, um, that's based upon what I'm here to accomplish in this shift. Um, but what I do know across the board is that we have to be very, because we are, you could almost say like we are differentiating right now. We are in the differentiation process um, in terms of, of uh, as we come back into our godhood and that process cannot be um, disturbed by external distractions that would alter that process. I don't know why they're showing me this. It's almost like, you know how you have a self-clean oven? And in the beginning, when you put it on to self-clean, you can open the door, and then it gets to a certain point where it seals off the energy, and you can't open the door until the process is done and the oven is cleaned. And then also, in some ovens, it's not until the oven has cleaned itself and it's begun its cooling process so that, you know, that the, the cleaning is integrated. We're kind of like those ovens right now. And, uh, you know, those energies from the karmic cycles are like banging on our door, trying to open the door to disturb the process. But that's all they're trying to do is to disturb the process of your differentiation. Now, if you let them disturb your, your process, then at this point, that's on us. If we let them disturb our differentiation process, then at this point, that's on us because they no longer have that power unless we give it to them at this point of, uh, unless we give it to them with our attention to them and what it is they're doing. I'm not trying to say they're not doing anything. That's not what I'm saying at all. I know that's not the case, but I also know that my directives have been it doesn't matter anymore what they do. Protect yourself and do what you have to do, but don't give your energy to the stories anymore. Don't pay attention to it anymore because that actually is, is where they are in their desperation and wanting us to direct our precious God energy in this creation portal towards more of the bullshit cycles. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close that out now. Thank you so much for being here. For those of you who are interested, I don't think I mentioned this in my last reading, I have opened a shop on Ko-Fi. It has all of the decrees I have produced, as well as the Sacred Bathing Manual, both in audiobook and PDF format for immediate access or download. It's there on my Ko-Fi shop. The link will be in the description box below if you're interested in that. That will also be where um, I will put the um, 2024 Tower Astrology Ascension Report for those of you who are interested. Please bear in mind um, all of the decrees that are in the shop as well as the Ascension Report for 2024. It is available on my Substack to those of you who are patrons over there. It is in the archive section. So um, I just want you to know that so you're not purchasing again what you already have access to unless that's what you want to do okay so um what else what else if you would like to donate to my work my messages my mission um you can do so also through ko-fi or you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee or tip me or whatever you can do that through ko-fi um or i'll also put my paypal below thank you um for all the ways that you support me it helps me to be able to continue to to do the work i've been sent here to do and i really do appreciate it um please make sure if you're still here to like um, you can share, you can comment, you can subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to. What else? If you would like to learn how to work with me or you'd like to book a session with me, you can do so by first going to my website and checking out my offerings. And then you can either contact me through the website or shoot me an email. Um, this is how I take bookings. I do not... Um, I need to have uh, an email conversation with you before I... Um, agree to, to, to booking my uh, reading and mentorship services, okay? So what else? I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, 
Misty La Noir 773 I'm still waiting for you love um, please get back to me if you want your free three month subscription to Substack it's uh, January the 6th I will give you until the 10th to please respond um, I have written to you uh, where you dropped your blue heart and I also left your name on the community board a few weeks ago so please get back to me if you're listening um, otherwise I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and choose someone else um, and I think that's it I think those are all the messages so thanks again for being here I'm sending you so much love um, if you would like to join me on Substack, you can do so at the link below. My other channel, Solara Rises, I will be back in a couple of days to do the New Moon and Capricorn Tower Astrology Ascension Report over there. And that is truly it. <laughs> I send you so much love, joy, peace, focus, 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 focus. We're going to need a lot of focus right now. Um, and yes, every beautiful thing under the sun that is ultimately your birthright. And I will see you again next time. Take care.